I know nothing about classical guitar. From the repertoire, to the techniques, to the guitars themselves, it's like it's a complete different instrument to me. But I'm here with the resident YouTube classical guitar expert, Brandon Aker, who's gonna give me a crash course in all things classical. So I think the best place to start is, what is classical guitar? It's a really good question. And it's, it's a hard one to answer in a nutshell, but we can start with uh, the actual instrument itself. Uh, we could say the first real guitar started around the 1500s with a Renaissance guitar, which turned into the Baroque guitar. It came in various shapes and sizes over history, but by around 1800, you have a six single string guitar with gut strings. So when we talk about classical guitar, Guitar, what we're really talking about usually is music for the six single string guitar from around 1800 and the golden age was basically in the 19th century in Europe especially places like Vienna and Paris it's the heyday of the 19th century finger style gut strings today we play nylon usually your finger picking uh, reading from score and you can think of it like piano music classical piano but the guitar version. One of the things that I'm always curious about are like who are the artists along the way yes. that highlight um, the history of this music? So the earliest players were people like Fernando Sor, Tarkazi, Carulli, Giuliani, then Francisco Targa is later in the 19th century. And then when you go into the 20th century, you have big figures, kind of our, our Pavarotti of the guitar is Segovia, mm -hmm. Andre Segovia, who is really responsible for the rebirth of the guitar into sort of uh, the mainstream classical the world. Of classical. He's the Hendrix of classical. But then you have also people uh, like Julian Bream, John Williams. Those are my listening recommendations. Awesome. Well, um, I think the next step here is let's head to the studio and I'm going to get my first classical guitar lesson. If you're a guitar player, electric or acoustic, you probably already know your open chords. But I'm here to tell you that there is so much more to these chords than most will ever know, which is why I made a guitar course on elevating your open chords. In this course, we learn about moving shapes around Dave Matthews chords, extending the open chords, thinking about bass lines with them, and a whole bunch more. The nice thing is this stuff is easy to implement, but there's also a lot there for the more advanced player. And I think this stuff is so important to know because so often as guitar players are called upon to play these simple chords. And if you have a wealth of tools and tricks available, you can breathe so much life and beauty into simple chord progressions that would otherwise be unattainable. This is a new course and we're extending the launch sale a little bit longer. Head over to SamuraiGuitar3.com and use promo code LAUNCH50 on elevated open chords to get it for a half price. The links for that are in the description as well. Anyways, let's get back to my classical guitar lesson. I'm coming at this like a complete <laughs> beginner in the genre. I have a base of music understanding, but I don't know how much of it's going to cross over. So yeah, show me the way. It all starts with holding the guitar. Basically the idea is we want to get the guitar being going from horizontal to like a 45 degree angle. Put your left leg up on that. Exactly. And then the guitar dips between your legs. And now what you have access to is the entire neck. But this is actually looking pretty good. So yeah, I think, I, should just I, keep think it. I look like a classical guitar player right now. Yes. Like. Let's get you playing something in a, in a way that we're, it's going to be very yeah. useful. The big difference is the, is the right hand. In the mainstream, uh, players play with nails. But uh, historically, both are valid. Let's get you playing though with your right hand in a classical way. Put your, your thumb on the sixth string. It's just going to plant there. Okay. Bring your index finger down to the first string and just let it fall through, fall into the second. So this is called a rest stroke. Do the same thing with your middle finger. Good. Man, Which this is, feels so foreign to do yeah. that. This is like walking. Yeah, like a bass line. Yes, exactly. This is a bass player thing. When you play scales. Oh man, exactly. it's like I've played a major scale so many times in my life, but that, I'm like, I gotta practice that. It sounds so different when you play it. Like with this, tone is truly in the hand. Completely in the, in the touch. And that's what I love about it, because in the middle of a piece, you can play something like, I don't know. I'm really controlling all the timbre. I'm choosing when to be a bit more nasal. And then on purpose, for example, the major chords, I'm coloring with a major brassy sound. And then I go to a minor chord and I shift to a dark timbre oh, to, to paint the, the, the har harmony, really. Let's segue to something now where I think we're gonna get towards the piece we're gonna play. Romanza, one of the most famous sort of pieces that people start with. But as you can see, I'm doing a lot more than just playing 
the melody, I'm doing a bass line and the accompaniment at the same time. And you put the whole thing together to make something totally beautiful. You know what's so fun right now and what I'm experiencing, which I haven't for a while? A lot of the time when I hear something like in the genres I typically work in, they make sense very quickly with my brain. And I'm like, okay, that's really hard, but I know how to do that. It doesn't seem like magic anymore. But with this, I'm like, oh, I'm never going to be able to play that. That's so amazing. <laughs> There's so much to think about already. I know. That actually better than learning more music now is actually going to the next level because there's a next yeah. level. Just getting the right notes at the right time with the right technique, that's a lot with classical guitar. Yeah. But it's, it's the beginning because the goods, the real goods, is actually adding the emotion in your interpretation. So from the score, if we look at the actual score, we see oh, yeah. mechanical notes on a page. Now here's the thing. The next question is how should we play them? And we don't need the music for that. We can just keep going like this. What about our first tool we can use of expression, dynamics, changing the volume. So if we just pay attention to the melody, that's like a staircase coming down. So we can start louder and then descend. So is there now a right or wrong way or a way that's written that you're supposed to do that? Or is that purely artistic expression? This is artistic expression interpretation. Your musical instincts are taking over and telling you how to steer things dynamically, so for the volume, and also with speed. So trust your instincts and your artistic uh, interpretation comes down to what naturally feels good to you. And in the classical world, this is where the goods are. Five different guitar players would play this in five completely different ways. and Or even one guitar player, like you might go and play this one way one night and one way the other night. I've been playing this piece now for forever, and I've played it a hundred ways. And as you mature, you, you, you tell a different story. In the end, what we're doing is storytelling. Right. Because I'm communicating something, you know, when I play... It sounds sad and lonely and shy. And if I play... Agitated. Maybe a little bit angry. Yeah. And I'm, where on the page does it tell you to do which one? It doesn't tell you. I'm seeing the light here, Brandon. You're showing me something. <laughs> Welcome that, to the club. We did it. <laughs> this is, it's so cool. This is all totally accessible to you. And it'd be a nice thing to dabble in, even if you don't yeah. want to do this all the time. You can do this. You just did it. I'm know? totally, like, I'm going to. Awesome. Okay, I'm going to try to play our piece one time here. pretty good except for I hit the no with my finger. But I genuinely like want to go and spend some time with this oh, now. That's great. Like it's, it's, I wasn't really expecting to enjoy this as much as I have. So oh, it's really, really, really cool. Thank you for doing this. You're so welcome. So I gotta say we've had a fun filled day and I've learned so much about classical music. And I think my uh, question for you, Brandon, is like, what drew you into this style of music? What do you love about it? I think it's worth pointing out that I had no intention of ever playing classical music whatsoever. I didn't grow up listening to it. I discovered it accidentally. I listened to a CD of John Williams and I heard this guitar sound that sounded like two instruments playing and I was so blown away that I thought I had to, I had to learn how to do this. What do I love about it? I love the, the emotion, the this new landscape of emotion that I didn't know was possible within me. Um, and also the intellectual side, understanding music theory, the music. And then very lastly, the actual instrument, the beautiful dark sound, sounds like a piano, you know, multiple voices. Um, and the technique for me is like the highest level of technical challenge that you get in the guitar world. I found classical guitar to be the most demanding, but then the most musically rewarding. I would never call it better or worse, just something different that for me, I can say, yeah, it moves me in a way that uh, I kind of can't get enough. Yeah, Love it. that's great. Like with so much stuff in the classical world, classical guitars themselves are something I know very little about. So we're here at Emmy Brunet's to learn about these instruments. Yeah, so Marshall, I think, I guess, my first question would be, if somebody were looking to get serious into the world of classical music and they want to buy their first real guitar, I mean, where do you even start? Well, honestly, I would start at something fairly reasonably priced. Uh, I'd look to spend no more than, oh, $1,200, $1,500.
I have to admit, I'm struggling a bit. It's uh, it's hard to play. Okay. That's my first reaction is uh, when I play cheaper guitars is that I feel like this resistance. The fight against you. Fighting me, yeah. Cause I have these ideas and I feel, oop, can't do that on this one, you know. It's... Yes, yeah, so I guess like that's, it's interesting to see this is where you uh, you enter this world as. The classical guitar that I have at home would probably be a couple hundred dollar value and I do instantly see how like this is this feels like a serious instrument now so step up from this there's essentially a price break between 3500 and 5000 3500 gets this but more elegant 5000 is the next major step okay so let's check it out Different. From out here, it sounds completely different. I mean, yeah, uh, it sounds like you're amplified. Where the price increase actually comes in is that this is made, each part is made by hand, just not one person's hands. Right. This could easily be your lifetime guitar, and for a lot of people, that's great. My experience is that as your skill increases, you can perceive more and more nuance. Sure. But if you are a beginner player and you, you have now f going forward the higher and higher level guitars, you'll notice less the differences. And I think you kind of earn them through skill. But maybe an important caveat to make is that for some people, uh, I think they're scared about the prices and it almost sounds like, you know, elitist or something to say like, you have to have this num like priced instrument to play well or no. to enjoy playing. It's not that at all. It's just that in the classical guitar world, there is so much nuance, there's so much headroom. Cool, well, I'm looking forward to seeing what's, what's next here. This one is one that I made. It sounds like a piano, you know? It's a crazy sound. I'm too, <laughs> the fact that this instrument can do that is amazing. You know what I noticed right away is the finish is very thin and it feels quite a lot different. It's an exudation of a bug mixed with tree sap that's been dissolved in alcohol. And as you apply it, the alcohol evaporates out, leaving only that resin behind. So this is quite literally micro thin. So something like this, you made this. I did. Every bit was done by hand, except for I guess like the, the tuning machines and stuff like that. But you would have done all the woodworking, cutting the pieces by hand and everything? Yes, uh, I start from raw wood the cedar top on that, that tree, which my father cut, which was dead, was over 2,000 years old. Wow. You know something interesting I'm realizing with this? Is I can feel our voices in this guitar. Mm. Is that unique to the higher end ones? Because like, as you're talking, like, I can feel your voice vibrating through the guitar. It knows Papa when it hears it. <laughs> <laughs> no, so a, a great guitar is never at rest. It's not like when you're done playing it, you put it down and it stops vibrating. Because these are such great instruments at this price point and at this level, they will be accumulating the sound and reflecting it back out always. At 25,000, you're kind of starting to bridge that gap between an excellent guitar with a huge amount of uniqueness and limited nature. This one, which my father made for his 25th anniversary of building guitars. This guitar is made with the most premium of premium woods that he had in the shop at that time. The tuning machines are made by the same company that I use, but these are pure silver. The rosette has an extra three layers inside of it. No expenses were spared with this one. None whatsoever, and I practically watched my dad lose his hair and sleep building these 25 guitars. He has so many beautiful dissonant chord shapes. That was a mistake. It was nice. And it turned into a happy one, playing some bluesy stuff. It's not made for that, but it still sounds amazing. Well, the measure of a good instrument is that it has to do what you want it to do. And it doesn't matter the price. If you've got an expensive guitar that doesn't want you to do anything, then what's the point? You know, uh, uh, I have people come in all the time where they're like, oh, well, 
I play electric guitar, much like yourself. And, you know, I don't know what to do with this. And all the time I'm saying, look, it's got six strings, it's got frets, you know what to do, you know how to play it, just play it. It's a tool, it's just a different kind of a tool. Can we go, like, let's go to the extreme, like, what's the... All right. Like, this is insane. Nineteen. 36 Herman Hauser. Segovia had many Hausers, but the one that he fell in love with was his 37. This is a guitar that is exceptionally similar to it uh, in terms of the overall construction and sound quality. Hauser was the first guitar builder outside of Spain to really make a great, successful Spanish style guitar. He's kind of the cornerstone of the collector market. This is legacy. This is like a Stradivarius. qualities you find with this one to me I get a richness and like a thickness upon thickness together to create this sound palette that it's not loud but it has mm -hmm. an inertia of sound I, I think this might be a, a situation of like where I don't know how to appreciate this one when you talk about that I'm like oh I would never even thought about trying to listen for that sort of stuff <laughs> Uh, impressive guitar. Every little thing is just that much better. Every single note, every single... Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for, uh, thank you for letting us play these and hear these. This has been like, this has been like one of the treats of my time doing this YouTube thing. And ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. A blues guitar player gets a crash course in classical guitar. The biggest of thank yous to Brandon and Marshall for doing this. Make sure you go and check out their channels. And remember, there's a launch sale going on for my new course, Elevated Open Chords. This course was designed for the electric or acoustic player who has learned those open chords but hasn't tapped into that wealth of amazing sounds and possibilities that's under the surface there. So make sure you check that out. Use promo code LAUNCH50 to get it 50% off. You can find more at samuraiguitar3.com. I've also got a links in the description. And of course, thank you all for watching. Until next time, look after yourselves, look after each other, look after the planet. I'm Samurai Guitarist, and I'll see you again soon. This is actually all about indoctrinating you into the classical guitar world, so welcome. And <laughs> yeah, next thing you know, you're going to have nails. That's right. No friends. <laughs>